Right now, we're going to be singing Glory, Glory, song number 711. Song number 711, Glory, Glory. A one, a two, a one, two. Come on, y'all. I know y'all out there ready. We're going to sing with all our hearts now. Jesus is with us. Here we go. Hey. Jesus is with us. There is a love. There is a love. There is a love. There is a love. In my heart. In my heart. There is a love. Together let us worship the Lord. My heart is filled with God's hope. My heart is filled with God's hope. My heart is filled with God's hope. Jesus is with us. Here we go. Hey. Jesus is with us. There is a peace. There is a peace. There is a peace. There is a peace. In my heart. There is a peace. Together let us worship the peace. My heart is filled with God's peace. My heart is filled with God's peace. My heart is filled with God's peace. Jesus is with us. Here we go. Hey, God, peace. Jesus is with us. 
Welcome to the I Believe Northern American Missions Conference. You've just entered the Hall of Faith. Take a look around. Who are we? We are the Pack World Sector. stand for, proclaiming always Christ's kingdom. Where can you find this PAC family? Throughout the Midwest. Throughout the Pacific Northwest. And Canada. people of God's Word. We believe in restoring Biblical Christianity. We believe in calling everyone to the standard. We believe in reaching every lost soul. We believe in mercy and in grace. We believe in giving everyone a second chance. How can you become a part of this family? by being a sold-out, baptized disciple of Jesus, willing to give up everything and go anywhere and do anything for Christ. This is the pack. You are about to witness what God has done in the pack family of churches in the year 2020.
the incredible first annual historic Northern America Missions Conference. <laughs> my name is John Causey and uh, on behalf of my beautiful wife, Emma here, uh, and uh, Patrick and Sparkle Boyer, who are also our co-directors of this conference and our amazing PAC Leadership Conference, we want to officially welcome you to our NAMAC conference. You know, um, we're coming to you from a very, very special place tonight. This incredible virtual reality world. We call this the Hall of Faith virtual reality world. And uh, I want to thank uh, Patrick and Sparkle for creating this world that we get to be in. And even though it's a virtual conference, we've got this incredible hall here. We're able to enjoy this great time together in. You know, many of the uh, men and women that we're going to be studying throughout this conference are men and women from Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith uh, in the Bible. Men and women whose spiritual exploits are so amazing that we're going to be able to learn from throughout this entire weekend. We're going to learn all about what it means to have an I believe spirit and to carry that spirit throughout all of 2021 as we fulfill and live out our mountain moving faith, dreams, and faith. Uh, all of the main speeches will be in this incredible hall right here. Uh, we're so excited to have Luke Speckman uh, preaching here tonight in a little bit. We've got Raul Moreno preaching tomorrow morning in this hall. We've got Tim Kernan preaching tomorrow night. We've got Emma Causey preaching to all of the women. Yeah, and Kernan is going to be joining us from LA with all of the women and many, many other incredible sisters that are going to be speaking on the women's program. And then on Sunday morning, uh, I'm going to be preaching in this very hall, this hall of faith where all of our heroes from Hebrews chapter 11, this is where they live. This is their spiritual home in the virtual world. Now, for all of you that are joining us tonight, there's a requirement to enter into this hall of faith world. And it's found over in Hebrews and chapter 11. Because it takes, it takes two things to be in the hall of faith. And uh, Hebrews chapter 11 tells us what those two things are. Hebrews chapter 11, please turn in your Bibles there. And we'll be reading in verse 6 to look at what these two things are. It says, And without faith or belief, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And so what's your ticket into the hall of faith, into the hall of belief? Well, number one, you got to believe Jesus exists. If you believe Jesus exists, let me hear you give a loud Pac World Sector shout out that Jesus exists. Show everybody on the Zoom call, you believe that Jesus exists. He exists. And then secondly, which very often is a little harder for us to believe sometimes, and that is he earnestly rewards those who seek him. You know that, that, that in our belief, God will reward us as we earnestly seek him. And so I want to challenge us to enter into this hall of faith every day by believing that God is, that he exists. And we believe that he earnestly rewards those who seek him. The only thing we need to take with us from this life and to the next life is our belief and our faith. And so this weekend, let's start investing in it like we never had before. Let's become faith and belief warrior like never before. Welcome to the virtual hall of faith. I'll give you my lovely wife, Emma. Thank you, John. Amen. I believe, I'm so excited. I would like to welcome you sisters to an incredible time in history to look at Hebrews chapter 11 and be inspired by all the miracles that was made by people of God who believe. To believe is so important, as John mentioned. I believe that we're gonna have perhaps one of the most incredible times to be reminded of how important and how awesome the faith of a woman can be. 
I'm excited by the women believers listed in Hebrews chapter 11. Also women like Sarah, Mary, and Rahab are all mentioned in the book that we call the Hall of Faith, the Hall of Fame. It is exciting that we today can have a virtual Hall of Faith based on our belief and our decision to be women who believe. We're gonna have an incredible women's time together. And in that time, we're gonna hear from women who actually believe and who are not afraid to be written and listed as women in our virtual Hall of Fame today. Again, I welcome you and I love you and I give you back to my wonderful husband. Well, we're so excited about this amazing conference. I mean, to spend our entire weekend talking about believing God. Uh, we're going to be so spoiled by our amazing speakers, by our fellowship, by this incredible hall we get to enjoy these great sermons in. I want to know, before I pass it on to our co-directors, uh, Patrick and Sparkle Boyer, to give us some more directions. I want to know, is Seattle in the building tonight? Is Seattle in the Hall of Faith tonight? Is Portland in the Hall of Faith tonight? Eugene, are you with us? Eugene! <laughs> Are you in the building, Indianapolis, the mighty Indianapolis church? What about Milwaukee? Are our cheeseheads in the building in Milwaukee tonight? What about Minneapolis? Minneapolis, are you here? Are you here, Columbus? Is the Columbus church with us tonight? What about the mighty nation of Canada and Toronto? What about Vancouver, Ontario? Are you in the building with us tonight? And of course, the host of our Northern America Missions Conference, the mighty Chicago International Christian Church. Are you with us in the Hall of Faith tonight? You know, we're gonna have an incredible time in this conference. Our faith is gonna be built. Our belief is gonna skyrocket. We're gonna love being in here. Perhaps in heaven we'll have a Hall of Faith like this one day, but even better, we won't even be able to describe it. God is gonna do incredible things. We've been praying for weeks and months that every life is transformed, that every belief is cemented and secured in Jesus Christ. And if you're visiting with us, we want to welcome you. Please be at all of the sessions. It's going to be an amazing time. And it's with that that we again welcome you to the 2021 Northern America Missions Conference. I hand it over to Patrick and Sparkle. God bless you. Enjoy the conference. Welcome everybody out to the Northern American Missions Conference. John and Emma, thank you for that amazing welcome. Uh, thank you for allowing us to co-direct the conference with you guys. It's going to be a fun and exciting time. I can't even ex begin to explain the things that God has lined up over the course of this conference. And so without further ado, we're just going to hop right in and we're just going to explain what God has prepared over the course of these next few days for this amazing conference that has been put together. But first, starting off tonight, we have flying out, well, flying in virtually, amen, all the way from New York. Our brother, Luke Speckman, is gonna preach the word of God. And he's going to preach the title, I Believe. And it's amazing that he has the title of the conference. And so let's cheer our brother on. Let's make some noise, even if, as we're here, let's get a chance to chat and say, I love you, Luke, and this and preach the word, bro. And let's let's cheer our brother on as he gives a chance to uh, deliver the message from the Holy Spirit this evening. And so, but and then we're gonna come together tomorrow at Saturday uh, morning at 10 a.m. And then all the way from Brazil, we have our dear brother, Raul Moreno, who's going to be preaching the lesson, Stop Doubting and Believe. And so that's going to be an amazing time. Let's uh, get a chance to support our brother, lift him up as he delivers the message from the Holy Spirit that morning. And then also uh, a special time, we're going to be able to have the ki a kingdom appointment and that's going to be our brother and sister, Rich and Hannah Harding from Seattle, who are going to be appointed as evangelist and woman's ministry leader in the kingdom of God. And I'm going to hand it over to my wife, Sparkle Boulier, for the Saturday evening sessions. 
Thank you, honey. And it's so great to be here. Hello, everyone. I am excited for our Saturday afternoon workshop sessions. That will be starting at 2 p.m. And we have customized workshops for campus, singles, teens, marrieds, and even Spanish ministry. And so join us for that at Saturday at 2 p.m. Amen. And so also for the Saturday uh, uh, events during the evening, we're going to have our Mercy workshops, and that's going to start at 7 p.m. That's going to split up, and it's going to be men and women. And the men are going to have our mighty brother from Los Angeles, the leader of the Los Angeles church. We're going to have our dear brother, Tim Curtin, preach the word of God. And his title is called, I Believe in You. And it feels so good to know that God believes in the same man. And our brother is going to help us to understand that during that session. And I'm going to have hand over to my wife to talk about the women's session. Yes, I'm so excited for the women's session. I am excited to hear from an amazing woman of faith. Whenever she speaks, I always have to jot down a bunch of notes. Um, but you guys know her as Emma Cosby. She will be preaching a message called I Believe in You for the Sisters. So you're in for a treat with that. Amen. And so, and then for Saturday at 9 p.m., we're gonna have our peer dance. And my wife, since I can't dance, I'm just gonna have my wife talk about that session because she's the, she's the one with the <laughs> dance moves at our family. So I'm just gonna bow, I'm just gonna stay in my lane and let my wife talk about that session for peer dance, amen? Well, he's being very humble, um, but we're gonna have some salsa lessons, some step lessons, and a virtual talent show. So I'm so excited for that peer dance. Get ready, get your talent out, and that will be starting at 9 p.m. on Saturday. Hey, Amen. you'll see me there for a salsa lesson. You'll see me there for a step. I don't know how, I don't know how it's gonna go. We'll, we'll go pray about it. And uh, but to know it's gonna be a special time. We're gonna see brothers and sisters have a talent show. The Kingdom's God Talent, hosted by our brother Joel our Lord. We're excited to see that. It's going to be an amazing time. And then to close everything out after we've celebrated uh, the night away on Saturday night, we're going to come back together on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for a congregational worship service. And uh, none other than our brother John Causey is going to close out the conference by preaching an amazing lesson. And his title of his lesson is All Things are possible and it's truly felt like that in the chicago church all things are possible and we really pray that this conference helps you to see that you can believe that you do have great faith that god can give you great faith he believes in you and that all things are possible through him who believes hope that you guys are excited hope that you guys prepare to worship god and i'm going to pass it on And now for our 2021 Northern American Missions Conference, I believe we have the honor of praying with 19 of our brothers and sisters from around the PAC family of churches. Paul urges us in Romans 16, 26 to proclaim the gospel so that all nations might believe and obey God. To that end, we pray to the only wise God in our native tongues. My name is Kunan. It is an honor for me to pray in French. Éternel Dieu de gloire, éternel Dieu de cieux, Seigneur, c'est un honneur, un privilège pour nous, Seigneur, de demeurer auprès de ta croix, Seigneur. Merci, Seigneur, de nous soutenir, Seigneur, jusqu'à ce moment précis, Seigneur. Nous savons euh, les difficultés auxquelles le monde est confronté, Seigneur, mais tu es avec nous en tout et pour tout, Seigneur. Que l'honneur, la gloire, la magnificence soit due au nom de ton Fils, j'ai prié. Amen. Hi, family. My name is Alessia Pavlenko, and it is such an honor to be able to pray in Russian. Привет, Papa. Спасибо для этот новый день. Спасибо за этот новый жизнь и год. Я так тебя благодарю. Спасибо за все мои братья и сестры на всем этом мире. Я так тебя люблю. Аминь. My name is Gilbert, and it's my honor today to pray in Mandarin Chinese. 神上天父啊，感谢您今天让我们在此感受您强大的力量，让我们在此观察您啊，观看您啊无与伦比的盛会。我希望您让我们更加坚定地勇往直前并增强我们的信心我们奉耶稣基督之名向您祷告阿们 Hi, my name is Araceli Lara and it's an honor to pray in Spanish 
Señor, qué alentador es saber que eres un Dios de toda sabiduría y entendimiento. Señor, oro para que tu poderoso Espíritu despierte a cada alma presente y cada uno de nuestros corazones se regocije al creer que servimos a un Dios que ha hecho y seguirá haciendo cosas maravillosas. Que seas glorificado a través de nosotros mientras fortaleces nuestra fe en ti. Te amamos y oramos en el Santo Hello, my name is Gursaj Singh, and I have the honor to be praying in Punjabi. Please join me. Chasi Kal Baba, I am your love so much. You are my love so much. You are my love so much. You are my love so much. I don't want anything, I just want to be your love. My brother, sister, Ben, Prat, you see, inna jada kar deyo. You see, mera na inna jada kar deyo. You see, ne tagra yo. You see, inna vadiya hai, vadiya hai. Me kuch nahi hai. Me bas disciple hai, papa. You see, sab toh hai. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hello, my name is Bethlehem Trujillo. It's an honor to pray in Amharic. Ini kita bagi Yesus Kristus semata cipta tanpa masa kena halu. Eh, tidak mungkin buat cacing sesuatu hal tanpa masa kena halu. Ini kita kerja conference kahun. Awal dah halu, tanpa masa kena halu bagi Yesus Kristus sem. Amin. Hello, my name is Jeffy Tao, and it is an honor to be praying in Hmong today. Bagi jalan sih, aku cakap tak tak sahaja lu tanpa lebih nyata isyam sih tu off hari ini. To ta 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 na bet song lai zai du nu na ta bet zai ta zai lu ta du ta ta ki bet zai lu lu xia ta bet zai zai ta zai lu da lu xia zhong. To ta ta nu ta fa na ta ta na bet song lai zai du ta bet zai lu bet du ta. Amen. Hello, my name is Zabora, and I have the honor and privilege to pray in Yoruba. Yoruba ko Jesus, ne agba ra je Jesus. Olu ala mi yano. Adu pe agbe inga a in logo for in loria yewa. I do plan to look at more like 2020. Cause yeah, it's too much. We're going to do to to you. Now you are the last year. I feel for you. To all in love alone. You are the best. I could so. And me, me, ma, ba wa soro. I do plan to look at you. Bad dura wa. You are called Jesus Christ. You are bad dura. Ah, me. Oh, my name is Nana Ofusugudu, and I'll be praying in Fanti. Whereas in Yanko Pong, you have to be the best. You do. You are more influential. For Nana, you are more bumpy. The best. You do. You are more here. I'm more what we are seeing. Anu mangu maya bombe, de eji maya ya bafya do na wabo abe pi wa America yeti mi. Anu yame uba Yesu na ya bomb impai wani zilem. Amen. Hello, my name is Lily Wang, and it's an honor to be praying in Chinese Cantonese. Yeso, mo kei tou li wing yun du bo wu wo de wo mai bei do di ge wu bei wo de gao do di yan shen ya so wo de shen ya so zhi do wing yun. Amen. Namaskar. Na pero already pero devin ki pradana. Mahadevra Yesu Krista miyoka Mahadevni ma andar ki yoka conference ko devin chide vada manta successful onda lani ma ko manchi ka devin chide vada yoka priti ma andar ki asadwa den chide vada. Yenny Mioka Koruku Jesus Christ Permina Amen. Hi, my name is Maria De Beres and I'll be praying in Tagalog. O Panginoong Jesus, ikaw lamang po ang nag-iisang Diyos. Marami pong salamat sa iyong pagmamahal, sa iyong kaputihan at katapatan. Nilalapit po namin sa iyo ang aming mga puso at isipan. Samahan niyo po kami sa iyong pangalan, O Jesus. Amen. Hello, my name is Prita Paul Sunkari and it's my honor today to pray in Hindi. प्रिय परमेश्वर प्रभु इस अद्भुत समय के लिए मैं आपको धन्यवाद कहता हूँ प्रभु हम सब यहाँ पे इकट्ठा हुआ है एक मन और एक तन से आपको आराधना करने के लिए और आपका शब्द पे ध्यान करने के लिए प्रभु जो उपदेश अभी सुनने वाला है उसको अच्छे से अनुसारण में रखने के लिए और अच्छे से समझने के लिए आप हमारे मदद करें प्रभु यशु की अद्भुत नाम में प्रार्थना कर रहा हूँ एम एन हेलो माई नेम इज नी स्मिथ एन इज एन ऑनर टू बी प्रेंग इन जर्मन Liebe Vati, danke sehr, dass du uns zusammengebracht hast. Bitte hilf uns allen, weiche Herzen zu haben 
um dein Wort zu hören und dein Wille zu tun. Bitte hilf uns allen dieses Jahr geistlich zu wachsen und hilf viele Leute jünger zu werden. Wir lieben dich sehr. In Jesu Namen. Amen. Hi everyone, my name is Tony Ventura and I'm from Toronto and this is my amazing wife Vida Ventura and uh, I get the privilege of praying in Portuguese today. Uh, let's bow our heads. Querido Deus, querido Pai, querido querido Pai, primeiro quero rezar por o seu obrigadinho, por o meu salvação e a salvação da minha mulher e por meu filho e meus filhos. Segundo, obrigado para os nossos os nossos discípulos de tudo no mundo todo. Hoje a sal foi um ano muito mal, Deus e e quer rezar por paz na sal e no ano que vem. Deus dá guarda nos corações, os corações dos discípulos de tudo no mundo, a nação da Trindade e guarda os corações para sal, o resto da sal e vai no ano que vem. Mas mais importante e finalmente, Deus muito obrigado por ser filho, morrendo na cruz, por nossa nossa salvação e, e salvação dos meus E Deus, uh, 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 obrigado por esse, por esse dia uh, que a gente está fazendo hoje. Uh, Deus, um, é assistido no nome de teu filho, uh, Jesus Cristo. Amém. I have the honor of praying in Italian. Caro Dio, sei maravilhoso. Tu hai um cuore grande. E tu li ami tutto il mondo. Dio pregherò di tutti i discepoli del mondo che tu le dai le protezioni, tu le dai il coraggio, la forza, la fede. Dio Santo, io prego per le figlie, prego per il mio marito e prego per tutti nel mondo che viene a sapere a te. Grazie per la Bibbia, grazie per dare il coraggio ogni giorno. E grazie per dare tutte queste persone che um, le amo a te molto molto Dio. Dio tu sei meraviglioso di sì, tu sei un grande amore di tutto. E tu vuoi che tutti vieno a te e sapere a te e vuole sapere tutte le parole che tu hai dato a te. Dio grazie per tutte le cose, grazie per il lavoro, grazie per la, la casa, grazie per la moneta. Grazie per tutte le trapontazioni che tu hai dato a noi. Sei meraviglioso, sei amore, ti amo molto. Amen. My name is Chris Adams and it's an honor for me to pray in English. Father, thank you so much for working in a powerful way through this conference already. Father, we do believe. Help us overcome our unbelief. Father, open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see greater things done in 2021 than we even saw in 2020. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, my name is Evan Bartholomew, and this is my beautiful wife, Kelly Bartholomew, and together we bring you greetings and great news from the incredible Toronto International Christian Church. You know, 2020 was a crazy year. And I'm sure across the board, everybody's been sharing about it and talking about how wild and wacky 2020 was. And I'm sure there's going to be many more challenges like 2020 to come. But the church actually in Toronto had a, had a great year. In fact, we started 2020 with just 32 disciples. And through God's mercy, God allowed us to finally break the 40 threshold. And so now the church stands at 42 sold out disciples in Toronto, Canada. One of the best additions for my heart was a young woman named Alex. Alex was sadly fell away earlier this year, but was able to come back, be completely transformed and be restored to God this year. The reason it's so significant is because she is the first person who was baptized in Toronto, has fallen away and been restored here. And so even though every addition has been awesome and we're so grateful, Alex is such a special, special woman to have back in the kingdom of God. Come on, Alex. Uh, another thing that's been very inspiring for myself is to see the generosity of the Toronto Church. 
You know, uh, we were not planning to, to collect a fall missions contribution. In fact, we worked really hard in the spring to collect extra missions. We've been working hard on our budget. And so there was no plan to collect a missions contribution in fall. Uh, but as we got closer to November, we looked at the budget and, and saw that there was an opportunity to hire someone on full time if we were to collect a six times missions contribution. And so I, I proposed it to the church and the church collectively, unanimously uh, decided to take up its own missions contribution to put uh, someone on full-time staff. Uh, our goal was $15,000 collectively. The church raised over $20,000 in the fall. So now our dear brother Isaiah Bamruwewa is full-time for the Lord. The generosity did not stop there. It was so amazing to be able to do our annual Mercy Worldwide toy drive. Every year we donate to a local school of elementary school children. And this year we decided to invite the community to join us. And it was amazing that we were able to not only share our faith, but the community overwhelmingly was so generous with us. We were able to collect over 176 donations as well as collect over a thousand dollars to go towards dinner donations for these families who have lost jobs or just have been financially hurting. And now they can have money for special dinners, holiday dinners. And so God just overwhelmed us with his generosity for our toy drive. It was a huge success. Amen. Well, last, we want to ask for your prayers. Uh, it's been put on our heart, it's been heavy on our heart uh, to, to, to plant a church in Ottawa. Uh, Ottawa is the capital city of Canada and it's right on the border of Gatineau, which is French speaking. And so if we're going to bring French speakers into the kingdom of God and eventually get to places like Montreal or Quebec City, well, we've got to plant something close to the French speaking side of Canada. And so our hope is that we can plant a church in Ottawa in late 2021 or early 2022. And I know it's, it's crazy to a church of 42 to be thinking that, but please pray for us. We believe we can do it and we believe God is going to bless it in a great way. Uh, we love you guys are getting very cold here, so keep us on your heart. We love you guys, we love you, and we'll see you soon. They bring good news from Seattle, Washington, amen. First of all, we want to thank John and McCausey. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for being our father and mother in the faith. We love you with all of our hearts. We pray for you every day. You know, we've had some incredible victories in the missions contribution in 2020. Early on in the year, 53 disciples had the goal of collecting $78,000, and the Lord really blessed us. We collected almost $99,000. And then later on in the year, we had this incredible goal of over $17,000, and we collected almost $25,000. $1,000. And God's really blessed us in a great way financially so that we were able to bring on some new staff into the church. We are so thankful to the Chicago Church for sending us the incredible Castillos. We have loved being partners in the gospel in the Northwest. And thank you to the Eugene Church for sending Rich and Hannah Hardy and Martha and Tony Terrell and Marissa Brundage. It is absolutely incredible to now plant the east region of the Seattle church. And it really is amazing what God's doing. Prayerfully, during our fifth year anniversary service on June 13th, God is going to send out the Boise International Christian Church led by George and Bloody Castillo. So please keep us in your prayers. We love you with all of our hearts and to God be all the glory. Greetings from Portland. 2020 was an incredible year here in Portland, Oregon. Throughout this year, we were able to see 20 baptisms, 11 restorations, and 10 place memberships. Something exciting to mention is that from these additions, five of them are family members. Magdalena, Yvonne and Jackie's mom. Irma, Felix's mom. Juana, Clarita's sister. Alexis, Roberto and Clarita's son. And Nicole, Anthony Melbrecht's mom. You know, with this, we were able to split into three new regions. We have the South, led by Sean and myself. A year ago, Osvaldo and Fabi began leading the Spanish region. And the South is led by the dynamic Malik and Kareem Grant, who are now in the full-time ministry. You know, on the campus, we were able to see Kaylee and Nikki get baptized, bringing our campus sisters from one to three pure student sisters. Reese got baptized, giving us our first male PSU student. Miguel Mendoza was baptized, and in return, that helped Carlos, Jonathan, and Jose get baptized. You know, the powerhouse Snowchez has moved from Seattle to Portland to be in the full-time ministry, and they now oversee the campus ministry here in Portland and are eager to move mountains in 2021. Excitingly, this year, we also grew out Clover's spring and fall special missions. 
And if no, we didn't use the TNT fundraiser to help us hit our goal. Also, we were able to send out nine disciples onto the mission field. Mason Hartley to Salt Lake City, Guy Santos and Jack Merritt to Chicago, Eric Cervantes to San Diego, Jesus and Rosa to San Diego, which is our first Latino couple being sent out of Portland, Anthony Baker to Minnesota, Andrea Alanis to Seattle to train for the Vancouver BC mission team, and Keenan Bowman to Eugene to baptize some ducks. Uh, we also had some health victories this year. Paul had a brain tumor that miraculously vanished before surgery. Gidget's brain surgery was successful. Preston and I are expecting, and Lorenzo and Oriana and Felix and Renvia both welcomed two beautiful new babies into their family this year. Exciting news for 2020 and to God be all the glory. Greetings from the Eugene International Christian Church. Go Ducks! God is totally moving in Eugene, Oregon. By sending us two incredible interns, Keenan Bowman from Portland, Oregon. Thank you so much, Preston and Shauna. And Sarah Carnes from Columbus, Ohio. Thank you so much, Colton and Mandy Roan. Thank you so much, Jeremiah and Julie from the Indianapolis Church, sending Brittany Eason to us. God is totally moving for the disciples in Eugene, Oregon, and those being sent here. I give you my wife, Brittany Miller. Well, we're so encouraged just to see how the Pack family of churches works together to build up God's kingdom. Not only um, are we encouraged by those that have been brought in with us, but those we've sent out as well. Recently, we sent out Hannah Pentecost to the mighty Chicago church. Uh, Ryan Rose also went to Chicago. Um, we're encouraged by the Terrells going to Seattle, as well as Marissa and the Hardys. They're doing an incredible job in this region. We're just excited to see the impact of the Eugene International Christian Church. One of the sisters I want to lift up that's in Eugene is Annette Bergstrom. Um, this woman has gone through so many health challenges, yet she's one of the most giving and positive disciples I've met. Uh, she continues to give her heart um, despite challenges, and I'm just excited to see how God uses the disciples in Eugene. Uh, we have some incredible disciples, the Smiths, the Gordons. I can't name them all right now, but um, I'm just excited to share the good news that's going to come from Eugene and the ways that God is going to work this next year. Pray for us as we pray for you. Hello, family. We bring you greetings from the South Super Region of Chicago. Woo! My name is Aaron Turner. This is my incredible spiritual wife, Sheila Turner, and we have the privilege of serving here in Chicago. Ephesians 3.20 teaches God is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. And in the beginning of the year, we laid before the Lord to be at 75 disciples by the end of 2020. We started off with 33 disciples, and to God's glory, we are now at 77 strong disciples in the Lord. But not only did God grow our ministry, but he also grew the campus ministry. And in the beginning of the year, we had three campus students in Chicago. And at the end of 2020, we are currently now at 33 students in the campus ministry. And with those 33 students, we are actually on 10 campuses in the Chicagoland area. Amen. Well, not only are we building a powerful campus ministry, but we are also building a powerful professional singles ministry. I want to share about a young woman who was baptized. Her name is Ariel Chaperin. She is a Yale graduate and she played college basketball and soccer. She recently moved to Chicago to play for the Chicago Red Stars, the professional women's soccer team. We are so excited to see how God is going to use her to bring even more professional athletes into his kingdom. And 2020 has been a year for families. Courtney Smith baptized her brother. Alejandro Medina baptized his mom and sister. Gemma Villarino was baptized. She is the mother of Charmaine Vichichini and Sandra Villarino. Crystal Wilson baptized her cousin. Theo and Leslie Dawson restored their son and Theo restored his dad. Sharon Dawson was baptized. She is the mother of Kevin Dawson. And Crystal Williams was baptized. She is the mother of Ryan Williams. Not only has God added to the family, but he's also increased our geographical area. We have the South Legion that is led by Cornell and Tia Buckner. And out of their region, they have planted the far South region. And not only did we plant another region, 
within our super region, we hit our fall missions goal and we blew it out by 132% for the Lord. To God be all the glory and to us be all the joy. Hi hey everybody, I'm Patrick Bouye. Hi everyone, I'm Sparkle Bouye. And we lead the downtown super region. I just wanted to share uh, about the amazing things that God has been doing here in the downtown. Uh, first and foremost with the professionals ministry, God has allowed that ministry to go from one uh, Bible talk group of professionals to three Bible talks. And uh, it was amazing because we had a brother uh, who works at LinkedIn, who's uh, allowed us to get into that community. Another the brother at uh, Exxon Mobil, Cameron Solomon and Nicole Wilson who's done such a great job of leading that group. That group uh, had a, a singles professionals Bible talk, which we've all been a part of, but now it has some business uh, Bible talk, uh, singles professional Bible talk, and in 2021, it will have a medical professionals Bible talk. And just a quick note, it was amazing what God had did also with our missions. We called everyone to give what was on their heart as it calls us to do a 2 Corinthians 9, 7, and God completely blown it out for the spring uh, missions and also for the fall missions. Uh, the downtown disciples out of their giving heart gave over 20% of their total goal every single time with half of our ministry giving over what they had decided to give in their heart. So God has been uh, doing some amazing things here in the downtown super region. I'm going to pass that to my wife. Yes, yeah, so I'm so excited to share about the women's ministry this past year led valiantly by God himself under the leadership of um, Emma Causey. And I'm so grateful for this past year's Women's Day. We did it a little different as everyone knows. We took it online and that did not stop us. That did not stop God from blowing it out of the water. With 23 women in the downtown super region, God brought out over a hundred in attendance. We baptized three women as a result, one of which is the mom of a disciple in Boston. Her name is Sharon Dawson. Amen. And another, a baby Christian, Kanika Ocean, who is a faithful disciple in the Lord. And so I am so excited just how God has really been blowing it out for us through our spiritual goals, because that was our spiritual goal for this Women's Day to be the bridge for women to have a relationship with God. Thank you. My name is Chris Adams, and this is my lovely wife, Carrie Sue. We bring you good news from the North Super Region of the Chicago Church. Daniel 12, 3 says, Those who lead many to righteousness shine like the stars forever and ever. I'm going to lift up Danny Garner and Taylor Causey as they shone in the campus ministry by baptizing by God's grace on all four of the main campuses that we targeted. DePaul, Northwestern, Columbia, and Moody Bible Institute. They also sent out seven to help start the far south region. And as God blessed their generosity, they baptized five in the next six weeks. Amen. Theo and Summer also did an incredible job leading the AMS region, and they shone like stars as well. They, with no paid staff, they grew to 15 disciples, 50% growth, and now they have an incredible opportunity to help plant the Detroit church. Amen. In the near north, it was a miraculous and strengthening year. Amen. In our May campaign, we added two amazing women to our ministry. And then one of the strengthening tools we use is chemical recovery, yep. led by Jason Collier. And we had two graduates this year, Victoria Singer and Anthony Melbrook. The graduation, the CR ministry had such an impact on Anthony's Amen. mother that she came to every Zoom for most of the pandemic and last December was baptized in Portland. Amen. It was a year of so many firsts, like our first virtual Women's Day, where 23 women had 80 of their friends and family join to hear our keynote speaker, Courtney Parlor. Come on, Courtney. Another shining star was Shaderica Klein, starting her very first campus single women's Bible talk. With that, she was able to be fruitful twice during the summer months. The North Stars kept shining. We sent four to the West, one downtown, and seven to start the new North Shore region. To God be the glory. I'm losing my 
love you I'm trying to find Find something new But baby I'm not holding my breath I need something to believe in I need something that can keep me Holding on I'm higher than the ceiling And I need something that can keep me On the ground Something to believe in. I need something that can keep me holding on. I'm higher than the ceiling, and I need something that can keep me on the sing number 202 hallelujah and let's sing this loud lord we sing your praises loud sing unto the stumbling crowd sing of jesus and his word sing until the earth has heard hallelujah And his blood, perfect darkness and the flood. Sing of judgment, sing of grace, sing until we see his face. God is love, God is reigning from above, God is sovereign over the land, nations are at His command. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Life 
with but a passing glance. Seek him while you have the chance. We are made of none but clay, till the chains of that great day. My name is Luke Speckman. It is great to be joining you today for the Northern America Missions Conference. My wife Brandon and I are honored to lead the New York City Church as well as oversee churches in the Northeast US and in South Asia. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank John Kazi for inviting me to speak today. It is uh, my great honor to be joining you for your conference. This year is the year of mountain moving faith. Uh, the title of the lesson I've been given is I believe. And so I, I took a little bit of time and was studying out these two concepts, believe and mountain moving faith. And today for our lesson, we'll be focusing in on, on two accounts. The first one is the boy with the evil spirit, which is found in Mark chapter nine and Matthew chapter 17. And the second one is the withered fig tree, which is found in, Ma in Mark chapter 11 and Matthew chapter 21. So uh, let, let's go ahead and take a look at that first one. Again, the title, I believe. Now, Jesus and uh, Peter, James, and John are coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration. It's been an incredible, incredible moment. And um, in Mark chapter 9, he comes down and finds the other uh, apostles arguing with the religious leaders and uh, everyone, they, they show up, they see Jesus, they're amazed, uh, they're a little bit confused <laughs> as to, uh, you know, why they couldn't drive out this spirit. And uh, let's go ahead and pick it up in that account there in Mark chapter 9. We'll begin in verse 14. It says, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that's robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Oh, unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion. He fell to the ground, rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It's often thrown him in the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed and violently came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him to his feet, and stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, the disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. 
And if you see in the footnotes, it also says, and fasting. Uh, you know, it's an account that uh, many of us are familiar with. Uh, I'd like to call your attention to a couple of uh, concepts here. Um, first is the, the verses there on belief. And um, Jesus highlights this in verse 23. He says, everything's possible for him who believes. And then the boy's father says, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Um, okay, so, you know, I, I started studying out this concept of belief, and it, it hit me that I had actually never studied this out before. Uh, so I found this uh, very exciting and, and rewarding. Um, the word believe, depending on the translation you look at, will be in the Bible 250 to 300 times or thereabouts. Um, the, the Greek word there is pisteo, which occurs 244 times. That's P-I-S, I'm sorry, P-I-S-T-E-U-O, pistao. And it, it's actually, uh, mo many people have studied out the word faith, which the, the common word for faith, uh, the transliteration is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. -I -I and of course, you, you would probably recognize that that is the root word. So the word believe is the verb of the noun form for faith. So when we think of believing something, we don't necessarily equate that with faith, although it could, but you might say, well, you know, I, I believe you or I believe what you say. But, but in the Greek, those two words are much closer related than they are in English. So the, the noun is faith and the verb is to believe, but it's the same root, pistis or pistau. And so maybe a, another way to say it in, in English might be something like having faith or to have faith. So to believe is to have faith or something along those lines. Uh, many people are familiar with this passage. And the thing that sticks out to them is that Jesus says this kind can only come out by prayer. Our, our first point is pray. You know, the, the apostles were there and uh, they were with Jesus and they, they understood what Jesus did. They watched him. I'm sure they said many of the same things that Jesus said over his time where he was teaching. And it's actually quite interesting because they're a bit confused that they couldn't drive out the demon. They, they expected to. They said, why couldn't we drive this demon out? And he says, this kind only comes out by prayer. So, so clearly they were missing something. Maybe it was a prayer in the moment. Maybe it was prayer overall in general, like they just weren't praying enough day to day. But you know, one of the things I find is that we can actually go through the motions. We can do all the things that disciples should do. We, we can do things that we see Jesus doing. And yet we can be missing something and lack the power in our lives to see miracles happen. Without prayer, we don't see miracles. Go to Mark chapter 11. We'll pick it up in um, verse 20. This is the account of the withered fig tree. In the morning, as they went along, they saw a fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed is withered. So the day before, you know, Jesus saw this and, uh, you know, he wanted to go get a, a fig off there. There was none. And so he just cursed it. And, uh, you know, Jesus replies here in verse 22, have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Verse 25 says, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your father in heaven may forgive your sins. You know, um, uh, this one, uh, he, it's kind of an interesting account because 
you know, Jesus curses the fig tree. Of, of course, all of his guys that see him do these miracles, but they're still shocked. They see, you know, this fig tree is withered. And, and Peter calls uh, attention to it. And Jesus kind of just ignores that. And he goes, look, you guys need to have some faith too. And, and so seemingly again here, he points them out to prayer. And he says, have some faith in God. You got to believe what you pray for. But you know what? If you ask for something, and you believe that you've received it, God will give it to you. Um, again, the word here for believe is pisteo. But you gotta ask. You can't just believe it's gonna happen and then do nothing. He says, you have to ask. And then of course, the last thing he says, you gotta deal with your heart. You can't just have selfish motives and you know not be unified with your brothers or have a bad attitude towards someone or, or be harboring some kind of bitterness. If you have that, you're not gonna receive anything. You gotta deal with your heart. You know, I, I was thinking about some of the times where I've prayed for, I, I don't know, maybe somewhat outlandish things that uh, God has actually uh, given me. And um, there was a time uh, when I was leading the campus ministry at um, Arizona State University. And um, we would go at the beginning of every semester, we'd go for 6 a.m. prayers and we'd come together and you know we'd partner up or we'd go in a group or, or whatever. And we'd usually walk around the campus or just walk around as we're praying. And you know, a lot of times it was still dark, but it was in winter time. Uh, when you're out at 6 a.m., it's still uh, you know, still still pretty dark. And um, I remember one time I, I read that passage and I said, All right, guys. I want you to pray like you've already received it. And at that time, we had recently gone to the ministry. And so um, I got rid of a car because I couldn't afford the, the, the payment. So um, I did a, a, a sublease to um, a, a brother in the church and I didn't have a car. And so, you know, Arizona is a, you know, it, it's a state that you can't really walk around. And of course it gets hot and everything like that. And I had three kids at the time. And so I, I did need a car to drive around and, and do, you know, ministry. And so I remember I was out and with a small group and uh, I just prayed. I was inspired by the scripture and I go, God, thank you for giving me a car. And I just prayed as if I'd already received it. And uh, then I went home and I went on Craigslist and I put, you know, minister needs a car for donation. And someone flagged it and they said, you can't do that. And so they took that post down. So I put another post up and said the same thing. And no one flagged that one. And believe it or not, someone contacted me and said, we'd like to donate a van for a youth ministry. And someone came in and, and dropped off a car. I was pretty fired up about this. Um, I remember another time in that, in that same time period, um, it was uh, coming up on special missions time and, and we were trying to buy a house. and. With where we were living, we wanted to move closer to campus. Um, and we were trying to rent a house, but it was actually much cheaper to buy the house than it was to rent. But I needed a down payment, which we didn't have, and it was missions time. And so I went outside and I prayed for God. The number I came up with was 10,000 that I needed for the down payment and for uh, my special missions. And so I just went outside one morning and uh, I just prayed, God, give me $10,000 so that uh, we can buy this house and that we can give special missions because I, I don't have any means for this. And um, that was about 5 a.m. At, at 9 a.m., I went into work and I won a $2,000 cash drawing. Um, around 6.30 p.m., I was on my way to midweek and I was talking to a brother and I was telling him the situation. And uh, he goes, hey, you know, you can get $8,000 if you're a first time home buyer. And I go, yeah, I know that, but you, it's a reimbursement. You have to get the house first then you get the 8,000. And he goes, no, 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 no. You just file the paperwork and they give you $8,000 in your account. And I go, well, how can you, like, you don't even know what house you're trying to buy. And, and he goes, no, no, just put down the address. And if you don't buy it, you have to get the money back. But otherwise you just, you, you get the money. And I was like, well, that can't, like, that can't be true. And he goes, look at my bank account. I have it there right now. And as it would turn out, I, the next day I actually went and filed the paperwork and I got the money, you know, less than a week later. And, but, but later that evening, as I was thinking about it, I go, wait a second. I, I prayed for $10,000 and I prayed for some random way that I don't understand. And in the morning time, I got $2,000. 
And in the evening time, I found out that I was eligible to receive $8,000 free and clear. And I go, that's that 10 grand that I prayed for this morning. And I was blown away. The next morning I got up and I prayed for $20,000, but uh, I didn't get that. Apparently God thought that 10,000 was enough. But, um, you know, um, I love seeing when God just answers prayers that you pray when you believe. You know, when um, the, the shutdown started happening here in the spring uh, because of COVID, uh, my son who goes to school upstate, uh, New York, he, uh, they, we, he had to move out of the dorms. And so it basically was just kind of like, hey, come tomorrow and pick up your kids. And so we went, we, we uh, had him move out and he was living with us. And um, I remember uh, numerous times, uh, my wife and I, we, we live close to Central Park. And so we go walking around Central Park. A lot of times we'll go for an evening prayer walk or something. Uh, but I remember distinctly several times going out with uh, my, my wife and then my daughter, Bridget. Um, she's 18. She's been a disciple since she was 13. And uh, the three of us praying, God, we believe that you allowed COVID to happen so that Malik could come back home and live with us. And we pray that this would be his time, that he would become a disciple. And we prayed for a long time. And we, we prayed uh, nearly every day for this to happen. But I remember distinctly as he started studying the Bible and we said, wow, like this could actually happen. And, and sometimes when you pray for something and it actually happens, it kind of shocks you because you go, like, I was asking for it, but I wasn't quite sure if this would actually, like, I didn't want to hope, I didn't want to get my heart there and be disappointed. Uh, but, uh, but amazingly, in August, my son Malik was baptized as a faithful disciple of Jesus. And um, even, even more incredible than that, we had a new members, um, um, you know, fellowship uh, about a, a week or two ago, and I was talking about the need for interns. We, you know, we described the different roles. And he told me afterwards, he says, hey, I think I'd like to be an intern. And, you know, of course, when your parents are church leaders, you understand what that means. And so we talked through it. And he says, you know what? Um, I actually would like to be an ICCM as well. And it, it just blows me away that here my son in March was going to a great engineering school. His, his, his life seemed like he was very good. He's playing basketball in college. He's on full academic scholarship. And, and yet he was missing discipleship, which of course is the most important thing. And he came home and lived with us. And we prayed and we believed that God would give it to us. And my son is a faithful disciple of Jesus now. You know, um, I, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about how much talent it takes to pray. And I realized it's not much. You just got to kind of talk to God and ask him for stuff. And you know what's cool about that is that anybody can pray. And anybody can ask as if they've already received it. You know, I want to give you guys a challenge for 2021. I, I, I want to challenge you to commit to daily prayer and, and not just daily prayer, but believing that you have already received what you ask for. Amen. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, continue in our study. Go ahead and go to um, Matthew chapter 17. Sorry, I have a technology issue here. Technology is fantastic, except for when it doesn't work. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 17. And um, let's pick it up in uh, verse 14. Um, we're going to revisit the, uh, the first uh, account of the boy with the evil spirit. And we'll look at this account in Matthew. Now, now remember... Um, Jesus pointed out to them their issue was that they didn't pray. He says, this kind can only come out by prayer, right? Uh, so in verse 14, it says, they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and, and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son. He said, he has seizures and is suffering greatly, often falls in the fire and the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. 
Oh, unbelieving and perverse generation. Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? I don't think Jesus was talking about the crowds there. I think he was talking about his disciples. Bring the boy here to me. Verse 18, Jesus rebuked the demon. It came out of the body and he was healed from that moment. The disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. You know, the, the couple of differences here uh, in these two accounts, the Mark and the Matthew account. Uh, probably the most obvious one is that in the Mark account, he says, because this kind of comes out by prayer. But, but here in response, he says, no, no, because you have so little faith. And uh, then also, uh, the Mark account doesn't mention this whole moving a mountain, which is significant because, of course, that's the, the year 2021 is year of mountain moving faith. And so uh, Mark leaves that part out, but Matthew includes that in his account. Um, you know, sometimes we can look at two accounts and we think there's an apparent contradiction. And, and, and really, that's not the case. It's just two different accounts of the same uh, situation. Uh, I mean, if any one of us were to watch uh, a some any situation unfold a traffic accident or uh an exchange or something that someone says uh each person will give you know the their account based on what impacted them even uh, this message each one of you will take something different out of it and uh multiple people might give an account of what it is that i'm saying and and you hone in on the things that impact you sometimes it's what you're good at and sometimes it's what you're challenged in because you're not good at it so i don't know you know uh maybe it was that uh you know mark was good at prayer and matthew uh you know had a lot of faith or or maybe it was vice versa i mean you know maybe you know mark realized wow i need to pray a lot more and matthew said wow i i, I need to have a lot more faith um, what's what's kind of neat about this is when you think about, you know, mountain moving faith, I don't know about you, but I kind of picture, uh, you know, maybe like, uh, you know, the Hulk or Thor or one of these superheroes, you know, is kind of lifting up a big building or a big mountain or it's just some very massive object. And you think, wow, how much strength does it take to move a mountain? And we think, wow, it's a lot. So mountain moving faith must be like huge faith. And that's not what she just says. He says, no, 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 you, you just need a, a mustard seed. And if you've, if you've never seen a mustard seed, it, it's really small. It's not much bigger than like a, a sesame seed. And Jesus is not saying it needs to be some massive, gargantuan, gigantic faith. He goes, look, you just need to have faith because you don't. Our second point is have faith. You know, there's a lot of things uh, in life we kind of realize this. So we, we, we give different degrees. I mean, d degrees of, uh, of categories make us feel good, right? Because you're like, well, you know, I'm not all the way where I need to be, but I'm not on the opposite end, so I'm kind of in the middle. And we, and, we, and we like gray areas. But there's a lot of areas where there just is no gray. And Jesus does a, a, a good job of separating black from white, often. Good fish, bad fish. Sheep, goat. Lost, saved, etc. You know, we understand this in our everyday life, you know, married, not married. I, I, I love my wife. We've been married uh, 13 years. I think we have a fantastic marriage, but I'm not more married than any other married couple out there. We might have more experience or, uh, you know, we, we, we may have some advantage or disadvantage to any other person, but it's not, there's not like a degree of marriage. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, someone's going to have a baby, they, they're pregnant. You're, you're not like kind of pregnant or you're not more or less pregnant. Either you are or you're not. And I think that with Jesus, what he's pointing out here is I, I think he's just saying, look, it's not like you need to like have, you know, a huge faith or you have a little bit and then you need to get a lot of it and get, you know, more. I think he's just saying, look, you just need to flat have faith because the reason why you don't see miracles is because you just don't have faith. The reason why you couldn't drive out that demon is because you lack faith. Go to Matthew chapter 21. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll look at the, um, the other account that we've been studying here, the uh, fig tree. And uh, let's pick it up in verse 18. It says, early in the morning, as he was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. 
seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. He then said, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately, the uh, fig tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly? Jesus replied, I'll tell you the truth. If you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what's done to this fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it'll be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Um, it, it may be uh, implied, but every account that we read where you see that word believe, it is that same word, pisteo. Anytime where we uh, encounter the word faith in our study, it, it will be that Greek word pistis. So we know we're talking about the same things. And, and Jesus right here, um, he, he goes back to this moving the mountain thing, and he says, you, you got to pray, but you got to also have faith. You got to believe it's going to happen, but you got to also ask for it. You know, um, faith is an incredible thing. And, and uh, even Jesus, uh, his ministry, uh, you may recall, was limited to other people's faith. Even in his hometown, he goes there and says he, he couldn't do miracles because of their lack of faith. And so this is an important issue. Um, so you, you may be saying right now, okay, great. You have identified the problem. I am not seeing miracles because I don't have faith. So what do I do now? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Go to Romans chapter 10. I, I love the Bible because it's simple. It's straightforward. It's not always easy to do, but it's simple to understand. In Romans chapter 10, and uh, we'll read verses 16 and 17. It says, But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah, saw, I'm sorry, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? The same word there, who, who believes? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. You know, the, the way that you get faith, one of the, the main ways that's talked about in the Bible uh, of gaining faith is by reading God's word reading the Bible. You know, um, <clears throat> when I was uh, a young Christian, I got baptized in Portland, Oregon in uh, 2005. It was fantastic. It, I was 23 years old. Um, I, I was just loving life. And um, I was asked early on to go um, to help strengthen a remnant group that had just started by Chris and Sonia Klopek in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, now, keep in mind, I didn't know anything about anything. I, I, I couldn't lead a Bible talk. I didn't know how to, the first principles, I didn't know how to lead any Bible studies, really. Uh, I had been a Christian from the day I got baptized, to the day I arrived in Phoenix was exactly nine months to the day. So um, I think other people had great faith uh, that I would do okay. <laughs> and uh, what became my practice while I was there, because it, it's when you're in a vibrant church, it's easy to sort of feed off of the fellowship of others. But when you're off on your own and you're in a small church and the fellowship is not there, um, you realize it very quickly and you realize that, wow, you got to dig deep in prayer and in God's word. And um, so I, I began every morning, I, I did a, a one hour prayer and then one hour of reading my Bible. And, um, it, you know, over a course of a few months, the other people who had come down um, from Portland with me ended up leaving or, or going to a different church. And so I found myself alone. The, now, the Klopex were there and those who were, were in Phoenix previously, but everybody who I had close relationships was gone. And I lived uh, uh, alone, not with any disciples. My, my Bible talk was 25 miles that direction and church was 15 miles in that direction. And there was no other disciple between. And I, I realized that I had to dig deeper. So... I began doing an hour and a half of prayer and an hour and a half of Bible reading. And that was enough. I needed three hours with God every morning just to have the strength to make it through the day. And, and something interesting happened, though, was that I fell in love with God's Word. And I built a foundation for a love of God's Word. And I, I, I built a practice of spending time with God in, in, in deep, meaningful time with God every day that I've carried since then. And uh, again, that was over 15 years ago. Um, you know, my, my practice now, um, 
for many years has been to read four or more chapters a day in the Bible. And if you read four chapters a day, uh, you'll finish the Bible in approximately 10 months. Um, most recently, I've been reading actually five chapters every day because I just like it. It's, it's a good amount. It's a good, you can study, you can dig in, but it doesn't take too long. And if you read five chapters a day, you, you read the Bible in less than eight months, um, which to me is fantastic. Um, you know, Phoenix has a lot of great memories because uh, I was there for about six and a half years. That's where I met my wife and we got married. It's where I went into the ministry. It's where my uh, youngest daughter was born. And, and there's uh, so many amazing things that happened. But I know that this was because I chose to dig deep with God. You know, people oftentimes will tell me that um, I have great faith. And, and it's typically, I believe it's because, you know, they they see the different miracles that, that happen uh, in my life or around me. Um, well, I read the Bible a lot. I, I, I've been in New York City for uh, now four and a half years, and I, I'm just finishing up my eighth time reading through the Bible uh, since arriving. So I, I actually have done probably I, I, a little bit more than four or, f uh, or five chapters on many days. You know what's uh, really amazing is it takes almost no talent to read the Bible. It does take a little bit. You, you have to be literate. Uh, in, in America, I believe that uh, the literacy rate is very, very high. So most of you guys uh, should check that box. But if, if, you, if, you, if you don't, there's still audio. So I think we're all pretty much without excuse. But when, when you realize that the answer really doesn't take talent, it's just a matter of doing it, that should be very encouraging because sometimes we look at what other people do and we go, oh, I could never do that. Well, actually you can. I believe that every single disciple has the ability to read the Bible and gain faith. I want to give you guys a challenge. Uh, I want to give you guys a challenge to read completely through the Bible, uh, the entire thing, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, all 1,189 chapters in the year 2021. It will change you. It will change your ministry. It will change your, your marriage, your life, your family, and those around you. You know what I realized is um, that we do what we plan to do. And so if, if you want to have uh, daily prayers, and if you want to have daily times in God's Word, you got to plan it. And so I, I would highly encourage every one of you guys to, to take some time and implement when are you going to do things during the day. Uh, I prefer doing them in the morning because that way it ensures that you do it. A lot of times if you don't get things done in the morning, the day just kind of gets away with you. Uh, I'm sorry, away from you. And we don't want that. Now, there is one other way that the Bible uh, says that uh, you can build up your faith. Let's go ahead and look at that. It's in Mark chapter 16. And um, it's actually, this account is actually uh, mildly humorous. Um, this is after the resurrection. And, um, you know, the, the, the women go and Mary sees the empty tomb. And uh, let's, let's pick it up in verse 9. It says, When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to them while they were walking along the country. These returned and reported the rest, but they didn't believe them either. You know, um, right here, uh, again, it's that, uh, that same word, believe, pisteo, they, they didn't believe. You know, um, I, I believe uh, that just like you can make the choice to believe, you can make the choice to not believe. Even when someone tells you, even when they've seen it, even when you, you know that they are trustworthy and his disciples make the choice to not believe anyone who sees him. Uh, Jesus comes on the scene in verse 14. It says, later he appeared to the 11 as they were eating and he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he'd risen. You know, sometimes we can look and, and we go, oh yeah, I just have a lack of faith. Poor me. We can look at someone in our, our, our ministry or a brother or sister we're close with and go, oh yeah, their faith is just hurting. Poor them. You know, when Jesus came and saw 
his apostles, and he saw their stubborn refusal to believe. And when he saw their lack of faith, he rebuked them. He says, you guys know better. You guys have seen the miracles. You guys have done the miracles. And for you to have a lack of faith at this point is just flat negligent. And you need to repent. You know, I, I think for some of us, we may need to take this uh, rebuke personally. If we've been in God's kingdom, if we've seen the miracles, if, if we've even been a part of them ourselves, and yet we still have a lack of faith, we need to accept Jesus' rebuke here and repent and make some changes. Now, what's, what's very interesting about this is that this is the setting for the Great Commission, right? In verse 15, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. You know, a lot of times we, we like to think, oh yeah, the Great Commission must have been awesome. I mean, everybody was so fired up. No, no, they showed up. They had a lack of faith. They refused to believe. They were hard-hearted. Jesus rebukes them and he says, okay, now go out and get it done. It was like a toasty D time. You know what I'm saying? Like he comes in and he goes, you, you guys need to repent. You need to be different. And, and you know what's really amazing is they do. They change. Um, our, our final point is share your faith. You know, uh, sharing your faith is, is genius because... Uh, it makes you, it challenges what you believe and why. When you don't have to explain what you believe, you, you never challenge it or you never really dig deep. But when you have to go out and tell somebody else, you go, wow, this actually really does work. Yeah, the world actually people are, are pretty messed up and, you know, uh, drunkenness and immorality, it, it still doesn't work. Because sometimes we can forget what we've come out of. You guys may recall in Matthew 28, um, we're familiar with 18 through 20 where, you know, the, the Great Commission is given. But in, in the verse right before that, it says that they came to him on the mountain, but some doubted. Well, according to, to Mark, they all doubted. Like this was Jesus' ministry. Share your faith. Um, you know, it's, um, I'm going to get my technology issues again here. Um, God has blessed us a lot in, um, in New York City. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've been here for four and a half years. We moved here in mid-2016. And um, in 2018, um, I was able to convince my parents uh, to move here. Now, they live in California, and they're retired. And let me tell you what, nobody retires to New York City. And, uh, you know, amazingly, they, they, they took me up on the challenge. They moved here, and they were baptized in 2018. Many of you saw it. It was at the GLC. You know, in um, 2019, my, my entire family, my... Myself and my wife, uh, my daughter, Bridget, who is uh, 18, who's a faithful disciple, and my parents. Three generations of us were able to be on a church planting to Kathmandu, Nepal. It, it was the experience of a lifetime. You know, at the end of 2019, my dad uh, was uh, visiting my sister for Christmas, my oldest sister, Stacy. Uh, my dad and mom were both there for Christmas. And my dad is, is, is talking to her and challenging her about discipleship. Now, my family is very religious. They, they grew up uh, in the Christian faith. Um, but he was really challenging her on uh, making her life different, on, on discipleship. And so we got on the phone and talked to my sister. And uh, she, she liked the concept, but she goes, well, I live here where there's no church. And I said, well, then you should just move here to New York City. And you know what? She did. A month later, she moved to New York City. She studied the Bible for two months and she was baptized as a true disciple in March of 2020. You know, um, because we've been uh, uh, virtual, we've been studying the Bible with people all over the place in, in ways that we never would have even thought. And uh, Philadelphia is only about two hours down the road, it's may maybe 100 miles from New York City. And we started studying the Bible with people in Philadelphia. And, and we're supposed to plant Philadelphia. Now, I wasn't supposed to go out until the summer of 2021. But we baptized three people in Philadelphia. And then all of a sudden we go, well, I mean, God must be opening the door. So let's go. And what's very exciting is that in December, we actually sent out 20 disciples from New York City, led by Nick and Deo Infantino, who were recently appointed Evangelist Women's Ministry Leader. We sent them to Philadelphia. Their inaugural service is gonna be January 31st. Please be praying for them. You know, what's very exciting is at a time when churches are closing their doors because of the pandemic, 
God's kingdom is moving forward and we're planting new ones. Let's go ahead and close out in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You may uh, recall this is the account of uh, the treasure in jars of clay. And of course, you know, the treasure is uh, salvation. You know, we carry that around with us. We're, we're hard pressed on all sides, but because we have salvation, you know, we endure. And uh, it says here uh, simply in verse 13, as it's written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Again, the same word, pistel. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. You know, um, when you really believe something, it prompts you to open your mouth. It prompts you to talk to other people. You know, 2021 is going to be an incredible year. I believe that it will be even a greater year than 2020. This last year was incredible, but this year is the year of mountain moving faith. You know, amazingly, uh, we've seen the, the movement get up to 8,100 disciples in 2020. You know, our mantra for 2021 is 10,000 for the Lord. Now, now to me, it's not if that happens. I, I know that's gonna happen. It's gonna be how quickly can we get to 10,000 and how much further can we exceed that goal. I believe we're going to blow it out of the water. Let's start 2021 off right with prayer, reading our Bible, speaking life into a lost world. Thank you and God bless. Amen. Luke, thank you, bro, for opening up this incredible conference in such a powerful way. You know, I really appreciated your three points about prayer, having faith, and sharing our faith. You know, I appreciate the progression of those. You know, if we're going to share the faith that God's given us the way that we need to, well, we need to get that faith. And of course, that comes from reading the Bible. But if we're going to be motivated in such a way, we need to have great, powerful prayers. And of course, the prayer that God wants us to have is the prayer that's going to increase our faith so that we can go out and share it again. So bro, I really appreciate the lesson. I know it was very helpful for all of us. And again, just bringing us back to the basics of what it's going to take to have mountain moving faith for us to pray, for us to gain the faith that we need and then share the faith that God's given us to those around us. And you know, if I could just give everybody a challenge here it would be very simply not just to pray believing or read through the whole bible in a year so that we can increase in our faith or even just share our faith i think even with just sharing our faith it's very easy at times to just get caught up in the rhythm of that in our discipleship why do we share our faith we're not just sharing our faith with people so that they come on out to church and that's the end of it we want to see people become Christians. And so we need to be praying, believing they're going to become Christians. We need to be reading our Bible to grow in our faith so that we can have the faith that's going to move mountains, that's going to move not just mountains into the sea, but people into the waters of baptism. So my challenge to all of us is to dedicate ourselves to prayer, faith and then getting faith and then sharing that faith so that we can be fruitful in 2021. We all want to be used by God in such a powerful way so that we can be personally fruitful. And of course, that would create the multiplying effect in all of our ministries and we would see God glorified in a great way. So Luke, thank you, everybody. It's going to be an incredible time tomorrow and on Sunday. Let's continue to give our hearts and be encouraged by the word of God spoken so powerfully by our dear brothers and sisters. I love you. We will see you tomorrow. Amen.